it'll be fun to react to that. You're going to see how I go. We seen, well, I already watched the episode. Um, To me, before I um start reacting to clips and all that, I would like to say this. <sighs> the episode wasn't really enough for me, at least. I, w- I would say that. The episode wasn't really enough to me. It seemed like, you know, I don't know. The animation wasn't bad. It didn't it didn't feel like the feeling that we've been getting about the thousand year blood war. It felt like original bleach. Uh which is not a bad thing, no. But it's like it's a vast difference between the thousand year blood war and like the original series of bleach. It's a vast difference. And this episode was to just show like how powerful the Ronda Reich is. Like how strong the uh they are. And I've been through this. Basby absolutely destroyed Captain Hitsu Gaia. Sh- destroyed him. So phone got destroyed by that one man. Like, so bad to the point where we couldn't even sense their spiritual pressure. But the best thing was when we see my boy Kisuke Uruhara call that captain, boy. I, I forgot that nigga name, but that nigga, that, the captain that he called was also goaded, too. He was like, oh, not called, but like interfere with communication. But that boy was like, hey, I got a way to restore that bond cause. Oh, yeah. That boy raw, but we gonna we gonna bring it back to the. Um, I want to talk about the ending part of where Ichigo is walking through that um, that um, intense training, bro. I don't think we understand how how much willpower you have to have for that. I ain't gonna lie, you have to have a lot of willpower. You gotta be really determined. Bro, I, hey, Ichigo Kurosaki, substitute Soul Reaper, you feel me? Uh, he a goat, man. He a goat. And when my dog start boxing, oh, my God, it's going to be worth it. Because that's when Bleach really finna pick back up, for real. Um, so, yeah, we got a clip I think we can react to right here of uh, the, the part five. I, part, I said part five, part 15. So we gonna react to that bit real quick. Then we gonna talk about it. We gonna talk about it a little bit. I do not own this. I'm I'm gonna say that just before uh this, this video. <laughs> I start this video. I do not own this. I love Kubo. Thank you Kubo for making an amazing series that I love so much, bro. It's, it's I love this series, bro. It's amazing. So stern stern with the heat, which is Basby, hot. That boy basically got lava powers, bro. It's, it's different. So just watch what this nigga does to Captain Hutsu guy. I'm like, Sterlita H. Dashito. Lazby. Yanda. You might, hold up, my bad. You might think Captain Hutsu guy really doing some shit. Oh my god, he just froze them. Just his one and two finger technique, bro. And he did that to Captain Hitsugaya. This is why I say Captain Hitsugaya is the most overrated captain, probably besides. Well, Hukia isn't a captain yet. But he's the most overrated, and I like Hitsugaya. The reason I, I realized like, how overrated he is is because I was really watching somebody, and they always point out, they pointed out the facts. Like, he never really wins his fights. He went against Gein, he got folded. Like, like, but Gein, but Gein is really strong. So I give it up. I'm like, okay. Gein was really, really strong. And you know how much cap bleach is? They had, you, 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 you would have thought, you would have thought that nigga Ichigo had a chance against Gein in like the first 40 episodes. Because how, how strong that nigga got. And then you realize the vast difference between him and Gein. And the fact that he beat Kenpachi is crazy. 
uh, fuck, but, uh, bruh, look at my boy face, bruh, ah, man, 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 look at my dog, bruh, and, 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 and let me say this, what the hell is Isheen? What the Soul Society needs you, bro? You you was going toe to toe with Aizen until the I the the whole Yo Kyu really formed with Aizen. You was going pretty well, and you you not here, but they need you. Hell, nigga, <laughs> shout out for your squad, man. Hold up, uh, Yo Luis is a lightning user. Oh, I, I'm not gonna. I ain't gonna say nothing. It wasn't even about Yodoichi. It was about the nigga that was, that was, that was talking. Not gonna say Another week has come and gone, and it's time again for Bleach Saturdays. This week. Oh. I will be sharing my thoughts on episode 15 titled Peace from Shadows. This episode drops on July 15th, which of course is Ichigo's birthday. And boy, have Kubo and the anime staff cooked really hard for this episode. The story picks up from the end of the last episode with the Quincy I ain't gonna lie, me reacting to this dude, I ain't gonna lie, he might change my opinion on the episode. Because from, from the jump, you seen what these niggas was on. Quincy's was on. Go. Boy, them niggas said. Them niggas said you how about her said not to waste no time. We're here to we're here to execute fat. We're here to go fat. Them niggas said Excuse me. If they're if they are a captain with no bankai, do not worry about them. Oh my god. I was like, damn. Beginning their second invasion of the Soul Society, with the Serete having been completely transformed into the ice covered Quincy City. This episode adapts material from chapters five hundred and forty seven to five hundred and fifty one. Which oh, they also said something really important. The the uh, Quincy's has always been in the Soul Society, just lurking in the shadows. That I ain't gonna lie, it was fire. That is gas. So you learn something. You actually learn something about the Quincy's and what they do. Which is roughly five chapters worth of manga material, which is more than what we had last week. So it's going yep. to be interesting to analyze how the events flow within this episode, because last week there was a lot of dialogue with quite a few alterations and anime exclusive scenes. But this week we're going to be kicking right into the action. We have several points of discussion to look forward to, like Hashward confronting Shunsui, along with the intense battles involving BG9 and Basby, which are going to be taking the center stage for episode 15 it seems. Now the real treat of this episode is a one minute post credit scene which I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on towards the end of this video so be sure to stick around for that. So without further delay here are my thoughts on the new Bleach Thousand Year Blood War arc episode. Amazingly before the opening we have this Ooh, incredible scene clean. of the step. That nigga look clean as a bit. I ain't gonna. That nigga look clean. This nigga look like he, he about straight business. He bruh that yeah that nigga raw. Yeah, he looks clean. ...that we had seen from the recent trailer of Car 2, where they all sat around a table similarly to the Espada. This, of course, is an anime... Oh, God, how is what? Go against Shisui, bruh. But he... Shisui is a hell head captain. Uh... I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell y'all something. That nigga Shisui is not sweet. <laughs> He's not sweet, so... ...exclusive scene that they have added, and we have the Sternritter Grandmaster sitting at the head of the table, with several Sternritter getting some new lines of dialogue. Individuals like Robert, BG9, Asnod, and Bambietta all have some lines here. Now, during the scene, the camera pans out to reveal the title card, Peace from Shadows, on the table. I love how creative the anime staff are with revealing the title cards for each individual episode. Now, my favourite bit of this scene in particular is definitely seeing Nianzo Weasel sitting there with that um unbelievably weird facial expression. Now this scene involves a discussion where Robert repeats Yorbach's order that the Sternritter who had stolen the Bankai from the captains are to kill their respective victims. Yep. BG9 questions whether if it's just going to be enough to send the sword out in order to deal with the Shinigami. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, my bad, I left that out. They said leave. I said just leave the, uh, the captains with no Bankai's out. Like nah, they still gonna kill them. It's just the niggas that stole their Bankai are going to kill them. 
because they are being weakened to such an extent now. But Hashwo clarifies that their intention is to take the sense of hope away from the Shinigami. He speaks about how Yuobak has predicted that the captains who had lost their Bankai will have compensated for their lack of power because they most likely are learning to fight without their Bankai in the short period of time between the first and second invasion. He tells the Sternritter that they have hoped that they can beat the Quincy without their Bankai and even believing that they will be able to regain their stolen Bankai at some point. Now this is the hope that the Shinigami are clinging on to and Hashwad states that they must remove their hope and etch true defeat into their very beings. And this is the intention of Yuhobak which Hashwad conveys to the other Sternritter who have all gathered. Asnod comments on how this is a very disturbing plan which also sounds fun. And then we get Bambietta saying that she plans to kill the doggy that she had stolen the Bankai from as well as anyone else who gets in a way. This amazing anime exclusive scene comes to an end when Hashwad repeats Yuhobak's orders one more time. He states that Yuhobak has commanded them to instantly annihilate the enemy. And of course in such a dramatic manner we then cut to the opening song, truly setting the stage for the events of episode 15. The episode starts with events from the start of chapter 547 but slightly trimmed down as we see the Serete engulfed in this dark red shadow. Ukitake's seated officers are seen telling their captain about the state of the Serete, but strangely- He's not even there. Like he's he's not there. I got. Oh my god. I don't even know if we're gonna be able to see this man Bankai. Ukitake is within a shrine with his back turned to them as he is preoccupied with something very important. We then cut to head captain Shunsui as he states that he had set up some traps within the Serete. Uh, he, he gotta use these. <laughs> He gotta use these pink hair niggas just so he don't get copyrighted. Hey, expecting the bro. Quincy to attack again without warning, but out of all of the things, he wasn't expecting them to lose the territorial advantage that they had like this. Yuhobak's explanation of how the Quincy had hidden within the shadows of the Serete is slightly repurposed and told within the manga during a conversation between Yuhobak and Uryu. In the manga, both of them were stood on top of Silburn looking over the landscape, but here Yuhobak is seated and watching over everything with Uryu standing beside him. Yuhobak explains that the Quincy had lost the battle a thousand years ago and they were left with no place to go. So they had decided to flee from the world of the living into the Serete, which is a place that the Shinigami would have least expected to find them. The Quincy had ended up creating spaces by manipulating Reishi within the shadows of the Serete. Now this is why Yuhobak refers to his army as the Invisible Empire. Their plan of course was successful because unlike the world of the living, the Soul Society is filled with a plentiful supply of Reishi. All of this Reishi in the atmosphere is a source of power for the Quincy. Yuobak explains that with this abundant amount, they were literally able to create anything. We then see Askin appear as he formally is introduced as Sternritter D the Death Dealing. I find this pretty awesome because his shrift letter was revealed a little bit later on in the manga. Askin of course tells the Shinigami within the recent development department that the Quincy had spent a thousand years building up their strength from the realm within the shadows. Hashwad of course is then seen confronting Shunsui telling him that the Quincy did not invade the Serete by breaking through the Serete barrier either in the first or second invasion. He states that they were always within the barrier from the very beginning. The head captain thanks him for the valuable information as he compliments Hashward stating that he appears to be Oh I was gonna say guy dang <laughs> two minutes bro. Is there another one coming up? I ain't even mad because they will copyright your shit like real talk. <laughs> Like what? Them niggas will copyright you. They will take your bread. <laughs> Them niggas will take your bread in an instant. Don't do it. <laughs> be well trained if he was able to reach the room of the head captain this quickly. Hashward formally yep. introduces himself as the aide of Yuhobak and the grand master of all Sternritter, as Shunsui also introduces himself as the newly appointed head captain. But of course Hashward is already aware of this information, explaining that this is why he had come to see him in the first place. Shunsui calls him impatient and asks doesn't he want to enjoy the battle that the Quincy have waited over a thousand years for? But Hashward reveals that Yuhobak is a lover of peace. He believes that the shorter the battle, the better it is. And it's for this reason that the leader had issued the Sternritter only one order, which of course is to eliminate the Shinigami instantly. We cut back to Askin with the members of Squad 12 asking who on earth he is and how did he get in here. Askin seems disappointed that they didn't listen to his explanation earlier, as he questions whether if the research and development department really is as smart as they believe themselves to be. He reiterates that the Quincy haven't broken into anywhere because they have been here from the very beginning, but then the 
the GOAT himself, Myri. Like I said, but that nigga popped out with that, that, that ish, nigga. He popped out with that whole own. He popped out with that whole own, bruh. Oh my god. He appears wearing an absolutely blinding sun coat as he states that it was inconsiderate of the Quincy to create another world within the shadows, but he isn't the type to hate inconsiderate things. Myrie goes on to speak about the data that he had collected from the Quincy's first invasion, and via this information he was able to predict that the shadows were related to their invasion, which is why he had modified the area within their lab in order to not have any shadows within it. He then taunts Askin to try and find out if his department really is only clever in just name. We are then shown a group of Shinigami who stand. <laughs> Yo, I swear they just put a bunch of random niggas all together just so they could get clapped, bro. They just do use these niggas for bodies. We don't know not one of these niggas. We have never seen an end of individual. Who is that? Yeah, see, look at the nigga face. They need that nigga look like an attack titan. He don't even like no, not an attack titan. He look like a, he just look like a titan, bro. Like we don't know nothing about these niggas. Look, you got all these niggas up here, and then you just see this one nigga in the back that's draw pretty decent compared to these niggas. Before Basby, but he fires a wave of flames towards them, telling them that the Quincy invasion is complete and that there is no need to resist it now. But then we have the epic introduction of Hitsugaya and Rangiku, who appear to have protected the Squad 10 Shinigami by creating a wall of ice, as they taunt Basby that his fire wasn't able to penetrate his ice wall. Basby, of course, recognizes Hitsugaya as the captain who had lost his bankai to Kangdu. After they introduce themselves to each other, Basby states that they are quite a good match to fight against. With Hitsugaya's ice versus Basby's fire. Omaida is then shown as he wonders what on earth is going on. This nigga. Yo, I've never seen a more useless useless lieutenant besides probably Renji. Like this nigga is, bro. Shoot, the co-captains is so trash, bro. They are so trash, bro. When I say so trash, bro. This nigga is trash. Renji is trash. Hopefully when Renji come out with his full Bankai, he is not trash. But, bro. Dude, it's not even funny when I mean. I, like, bro. These niggas is trash. Keep in mind that Renji. <laughs> Renji got boxed up by Ichigo. That never really fought a Soul Reaper before. But then the first 20 episodes, bro, he got boxed up like that by Ichigo. And Ichigo didn't really know his. Ichigo still don't understand the, the Shinigami. Like, he don't understand the Shinigami. He don't. It's the fact that nigga boxed you up when he didn't know his own powers. But that hell is funny. On. His younger sister is also revealed to be next to him, pleading with him not to go. But Omaida tells her that he has to go in order to protect the Serite and their family, reminding her that he is a member of the Gote 13. But suddenly, the Sternritter BG9 appears before them as Omaida recognizes him as the Sternritter who had stolen the Bankai of Siphon. Before we cut to the midpoint of the episode, we get this amazing scene of Yuhobak sat watching the Wandenreich city, along with Uryu standing next to him, also observing the events that are unfolding. Folding. When we return, we see Rangiku tell the other Shinigami to fall back because her and Hitsugaya will take care of the Sternritter. Basby notes that the ice that Hitsugaya is creating is really thin, and he states that he can spread it as much as he wants to, but he will only end up effortlessly melting it with his flames. Before Rangiku turns up, there is this really nice anime exclusive scene that we have seen from the trailers of Core 2, where Basby is firing a flaming fist towards Hitsugaya, who only ends uh -huh. up avoiding the attack as he goes to higher ground. Now this of course continues with the events from the manga where Rangiku in look, 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 look. this nigga bro he's a guy already look clean bro like I, I don't wanna say nothing but bro his adult <laughs> form is crazy like bro that they clean as a bit like cold literally bro that nigga bro I don't know bro 
informs Hitsugaya that the Shinigami from Squad 10 have fallen back, as Hitsugaya accepts help from Rangiku here. I love the fact that they didn't cut this scene from the anime, because a lot of these brief comedic moments yeah. like this are overlooked, but I really like that they have kept this in, as I believe that it fleshes out the dynamic between Rangiku and Hitsugaya. Rangiku then unleashes her Shikai which she fuses with Hitsugaya's ice. Baz B struggles to melt the ice, as Hitsugaya explains that the ice is a multi-layered wall of vacuum ice. The multiple layers of ice have been created by Rangiku Zanpakuto combined by Hitsugaya's, as multiple thin layers of air have been created into several layers of ice. Thus combining Rangiku and Hitsugaya's powers, they were able to create a multi-layered wall of vacuum ice. Hitsugaya explains that a Shikai and Bankai are quite similar, and the only difference between them is the amount of ice that can be produced in each form. The amount of ice created by a Shikai is drastically reduced. He reveals that in the time since the Quincy had attacked, he had been training to fight with less ice, which appears to have been enough to be able to successfully block the flames of Baz B. But the Sternritter then fires a blast of flames towards him, but it once again fails to penetrate through the vacuum ice wall. Hitsugaya, of course, then ends up counter-attacking by blasting him with his own Shikai. With Baz B now sealed within a wall of ice, Rangiku says that it appears as though the Sternritter can be beaten without having to resort to using Bankai. We then cut back to Hashward and sure. Shunsui speaking, as Nanao has created a barrier called Ultimate White Wall, which blocks Hashward's power and prevents him from entering. She explains that this is a barrier that temporarily is able to shut out any Quincy powers. We then cut back to Omida being attacked by BG9. Now this entire sequence is really different to how things unfold within the manga, because most importantly, during this scene in the anime, his sister is still with him. And it also includes some additional scenes here which portray Omida in more of a heroic manner. BG9 asks him where his captain is as he states that this is the third time that he is asking him, and he wants an answer this time round. As BG9 tells him that he cannot find Soifon after searching the area with his spiritual pressure samples, which he had acquired from the first invasion. He wasn't even able to find her after extending his search outside of the Serite. Omida frustratingly says that he doesn't know where she is. BG9 then accepts that he has refused for the third time to tell him as he aims his tendril towards his younger sister to impale her, but Omida intercepts the attack. Now this is very different from real nigga real nigga but like, well, he's like you ain't gonna touch my fucking sister nigga i'll protect her with my life i like it i like it i like it the manga as he ends up protecting her as it's all in line with the anime staff trying to make omida appear to be a bit more heroic in the anime version i'm assuming that this was a change that was recommended by kubo because to be honest in the manga omida just is his usual pathetic self here now after protecting his sister that mean he let his sister get hit. Oh my god, this nigga is trash, bro. And let me tell y'all this. So this is gonna get real sad. When 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 the, when the Kubo was making a um, thousand year blood war, he was really 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 sick. Like towards the end, so the ending isn't as good as it's supposed to be. So expect a lot of changes throughout like the anime. And, and especially since this one he's more hands on in is going to be directly from him like he's hands on the last that's why I like this bleach way more than um regular one because the the last bleach he wasn't really hands on you know what I mean this one he's hands on to, like yeah the BG9 reveals his Reishi minigun and he fires it towards Omida, but then Soifon finally appears onto the battlefield, saying that she is surprised because she would have expected a Quincy to use a bow and arrow instead of this sophisticated gun, which she has destroyed and she is holding a portion of in her hand. Now, I absolutely love this shot of Soifon, which is adapted with this deep red background and her infinite Shunko flowing behind her. BG9, of course, is surprised because he didn't send Soifon, but Soifon explains that cloaking her spiritual pressure is to be expected from the leader of the stealth division. BG9 knows exactly who she is and what titles she holds, but he is surprised by her appearance. Siphon explains that this is her Shunko. Once again, BG9 is aware of this as he explains that this is the highest form of Hakuda combat art, and it's done by applying Kido onto your back and shoulders. He assumes that her Shunko must still be unperfected at this point, but it's evident from Siphon's display of power that she has perfected her Shunko now. She then quickly 
quickly appears in front of BG-9 and unleashes her infinite Shunko, which causes a devastating blast to echo through the Quincy City. Following Shunsui's attack, we cut to material from the beginning of chapter 550, where Askin is seen speaking with Mairi again. The Sternritter gets a feeling that it will take too long to eliminate Mairi, stating that there are too many possible scenarios for him to test out against the Shinigami. Askin says that he is the type of person to enjoy rushing one fight to the next, preferring not to get too hung up on little details as he suggests that Mairi go look for somebody else to fight. As he is walking away, he asks if Mairi is going to stop him, but the Shinigami says that before he gets closer and steps into his territory, he wants to analyze his spiritual pressure first. Askin is surprised that Mairi had seen through his taunts and he is glad that he hasn't revealed his ability to him just yet. Of course, it's evident that Askin's power has something to do with altering the space around him. Mairi then senses that Siphon was supposedly able to defeat her opponent without using Bankai. Askin goes on to say that Yuobak had predicted that the captains who had lost their Bankai would learn how to fight without them in the short amount of time that they had. He then says that this was already accounted for by the Sternritter and taking this into consideration, the situation for the Shinigami has just become a lot more critical. Deadass, the only niggas that really save like the Soul Society, bro, is the only niggas that could save the Soul Society, I think, is Byakuya, Kenpachi, and Ichigo, bro. And I Ichibe, obviously. Or the whole squad zero. But them niggas really just be like, them niggas haven't been down there putting in work for no reason. Like, at all. It's only, I ain't gonna say nothing. Hitsugaya of course notices the blast as Rengiku says that things are looking good as she suggests that they go and help some other captains. Sure. But behind them, Basby is revealed to have survived as he states that they are only warming up and the fight is just getting started. Basby melts his way out of the ice vacuum. Now Basby has some anime exclusive lines here where he tells Hitsugaya that he only needs one finger in order to defeat him and even if he had his Bankai at this very moment in time, then he would have been able to defeat the ice of his Bankai with a single finger too. Hitsugaya fires a wave of ice towards him, but it is so thin that it doesn't reach him. He then tries to fall back with Rangiku after he creates an ice wall, but Basby uses Burner Finger 1, which directly fires through Hitsugaya's chest. We of course then cut back to Siphon as she avoids an attack from BG9, who has recovered from the infinite Shunko attack. She then grabs his tendril and slams it into several buildings, telling him that she is surprised that he is still breathing. But BG9 says that he was never breathing in the first place. The Enrita then opens up some of the armored plates on his body, revealing multiple projectiles, as he tells her that at her current level, there is no need to use a Bankai against her. He then goes on to say that he was disappointed by her infinite Shunko as he fires projectiles at her. She avoids them but ends up being impaled through her wrist by one of BG9's tendrils. Then at this close range, Siphon is attacked by one of his projectiles. Hey, the With the explosion shot. erupting from Siphon's battle, we cut back to Shunsui Nanao and Hashward. The Sternritter Grand Master asks if the other captains are able to use the technique which Nanao is using, but she nervously says no. He states to them that she should have taught the others this technique because maybe then they could have died while putting up a fight instead of this brutal one-sided execution. We then cut to Hitsugaya evading Basby with the Sternritter questioning why he is running away and it isn't becoming of a captain to be behaving like this. He then fires his ice once more towards Basby but he melts it, but this time he ends up being surrounded by a mist of ice which he also also effortlessly melts. The Sternritter is frankly tired of his little tricks, but Hitsugaya says that he has come up with a plan, revealing that he has set up a trap as he activates his technique Six Point Ice Formation, which encases Basby into a tall tower of ice. But the Sternritter easily breaks free, much to Hitsugaya's shock. He then reminds him that he only needed one finger in order to defeat him. He then asks if he. See what I'm saying? Literally, the soul reapers just got folded yet again, bro. But luckily, this is gonna actually tee up. It's gonna tee up. It's gonna tee up. I think the next episode, well, the soul reapers actually got to push back. Like I told y'all on the first episode, all right, when I first bit drop, do not expect to see Ichigo. Do not. Just don't expect it. Y'all gonna see him. It's most likely you gonna see him. But you're not gonna really like. You won't see him till like the later half of the season for real. That just proved everything because I think this this um 
Thousand Year Blood War has gonna have like four seasons or like four parts. So this is the second part. The third part probably is when they in the um the Soul King Palace and everything like that. Yeah. Uh, but the way this but this should include like seventy chapters, bro. So it could really go to three seasons if they want to, but I don't know. If he wants to make him mad enough to use two fingers, as he then activates his technique Burner Finger 2, which breaks Hitsugaya's Zanpakuto and literally brings the captain down to his knees. This intense battle is interrupted by Kang Du, who appears and tells Basbi that this is enough, because Yuobak had ordered the Quincy, who had stolen the captain's Bankai, to be responsible for delivering the final blow. Kang Du, of course, has appeared in order to end Hitsugaya's. This nigga done lost his Bankai. This nigga catch everything but. Uh, Everything but dubs, bro. Nigga catch L, 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 like L's, bro. It made no sense. Life. Oh Meanwhile, we cut back to Myri at the research and development department, who is alerted that the spiritual pressures of Siphon and Hitsugaya can no longer be detected. But then Myri disappointingly asks himself if he is the only captain who is able to fight without a bankai. But he then gets an urgent call from Urahara, who informs him that he has figured out a way to regain the stolen bankai. Now, this is where episode 15 ends, but there is a phenomenal post credit scene which is a minute long and it reveals a poem that is said by Ichibe, and it's during the entire scene sequence of Ichigo training. Now during this post credit scene we catch back up with Ichigo during his training with Ichibe and he's seen walking down the strange realm that he has been taken to. This realm of course can only be entered with the permission of the Soul King we had learned in the last episode. In the background of this scene Ichibe is in fact saying a poem and this is what he says in the poem. It begins but does not end. Names wither in the silence in an abyss of rolling clouds. Raindrops fill an empty vessel. Those who are unworthy to be a vessel succumb come to its weight and it turns to stone. It breaks apart and turns to gravel. Pounding rain reduces it to dust. For such a vessel, there is no way out. Following this verse of the poem, Ichigo is then seen losing his balance as he feels a heavy force upon him. He then questions what is this heaviness that he is feeling? And of course, if you link it back to the poem that Ichibe was just saying, Ichigo is in fact the empty vessel that is currently being filled with raindrops. He is now being tested whether if he is a worthy vessel to become the next Soul King, I'm guessing. As he is being filled with raindrops or pressure here, he's being tested whether if he is going to succumb to its weight and end up transforming to stone. The worst case scenario is during this test to see if he is a worthy candidate for the Soul King, if he cannot sustain the weight then he'll break apart and turn to gravel, be transformed to stone and then reduced to dust after the pounding of the rain. Each Let me fuck it. Yo. Okay, now I know I've been kind of monotone, blah 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 blah, I've been cooling, you know. But this part about to make me tee the fuck up. Because this nigga want this. This man Ichibe want Ichigo to be the soul king so bad, bro. He wants him to be the soul king. He literally wants to cut off his limbs and make him the replica of the soul king, bro. He literally wants to do that, bro. Which is why he's starting to feel heavy. Because that spiritual pressure is soul king's pressure. Can Ichigo handle it? Can you handle some of it? If he doesn't, he's going to die. This is a test. This is a test of willpower. I already knew this. I said, Ichi, I was watching this, but I said, out of everybody in this show, Ichigo has the most willpower out of, ever, like, out of every nigga. He's, like, he's the most determined nigga. Like, everybody determined is a bit in every anime. But this nigga is just different. Like, he's different, bro. <sighs> man. I I'm just waiting to this man get his his new uni, bro. I'm just waiting, bro. I'm, I'm excited. Because they showed the new uni in the intro. Which makes me think that we actually might be able to see Ichigo within the next two or three episodes. So, that shit kind of lit. And what my nigga Ichigo is finna do, he is going to dick on these Stormers, bro. He's going to dick on the Quincy's, bro. He's going to dick them. Like, I'm not even joking when I say this, bro. I'm not. The only nigga he really don't dick on, I think he get hit three times. Like, I actual, like, damage. Like, it's about three niggas. You have bought her. I don't think, I don't know if it was Udi, but it was like two other Quincy's, bro. Them niggas as strong as a bit. Like, um, Yuha Baha's like a point at five. 
them niggas is the only niggas that he really got to worry about. But even still, Ichigo's too strong. He didn't even use the vast Lorde. He didn't even... Oh. Ube states that for a because vessel dog, that bro. is not worthy in a way, there is no way out. Now, the poem continues with the final verse, as he says, But if one does not enter, there is no path. Those who are about to perish call it Irazu Sando. Now, a lot of people are speculating if Irazu Sando is the actual name of the Soul King. But others have said Irazu Sando is the path that Ichigo is currently walking down right now, as he is facing this shrine. Maybe the process of testing to see if Ichigo is fit to be the next Soul King vessel is called Irazu Sando. Of course, a lot of this leaves us with way more questions than and answers. And I'm going to have a bit more of a detailed breakdown about this post credit scene in my manga vs anime analysis video tomorrow. But be sure to let me know your thoughts about what this post credit scene means and what Ichibe's poem means. Do you agree with me that it's about Ichigo being tested as a vessel? Or could it be referring to something entirely different? Now this was an episode that managed to take what has already been an extremely strong visual foundation which was established in episode 14 and build upon it even further. This episode featured what I personally believe to be the best art consistency that we've ever gotten in the Bleach anime. It is full of well detailed characters who almost 95% of the time remain on model and I think that we have no one else to thank for these extremely strong drawings than our chief animation director for this episode Michio Hasegawa. And it's not just the art that's phenomenal in this episode but also the visuals. Director Taguchi is- Well at first I was like uh, animation normally look like that. The animation is really good. Don't get this shit confused. It's the Thousand Year Blood War. Hitsugaya, Basby, Housewalk. Them niggas look clean as a bitch, bro. Best known for how much he loves to play with colors and his emphasis on compositing. And, and today that, we got what I. The way the ice look, bro. Look at the ice, bro. The ice look crazy. It look good, bro. Especially compared to like old bleach, bro. It look amazing. Bro. We gotta let these niggas cook, though. Cause this episode I ain't really like it like that. I ain't gonna lie, I liked it, but it didn't have me like how all the first episode had me. The first episode had me off rip. Hmm. So I'm just excited to see the next one might call the most Taguchi episode ever. The compositing for the scenes were absolutely phenomenal, with multiple scenes being shaded under different colors that give the episode an amount of visual wealth that it has no right to have. This is also the first time that we see the red sky being put to the test and I'm going to have to be honest, it works really well. So much so that I feel all the worrying might have been for nothing. My favorite shot for this episode will definitely have to be the background shot of Uryu and Hashwalt standing before an opening where the red sky is in full view along with the Quincy cityscape because this scene just looks absolutely amazing. My second favorite shot was from Hitsugaya's battle against Baz B, which brings us to the animation. The animation in this episode is fine, I would say, I wouldn't call it amazing, especially on the character animation side of things. But what works incredibly well is the effect animation. We can only attribute things. But it makes sense. Two trash characters. I'm fine, fine. They ain't trash, bro. But. You think these niggas have the most feats the way that niggas overrate them. Oh my god. Like, Jesus. Rukia, Rukia, that nigga Mark said it yesterday. Rukia was trash until uh, they were in Waco Mundo and she had to fade that one nigga. Uh, the shit that stopped her. I agree. She was trash. Until then. <laughs> until that part, specifically. And let me Let me say something. Why did all those captains and lieutenants and whatever the fuck, why did they stay back in Waco Mundo instead of going to help Ichigo? Instead of tech protecting the Soul Society? Like, they send the strongest captains to help out in Waco Mundo. Knowing that Aizen is going to invade. Y'all niggas better be lucky that Ichigo, bro. You better be lucky that I Ichigo's dad came up, bro. You better be lucky, bro. But what works incredibly well is the effect animation. We can only attribute this to the absolute legend who was the action and effects animator for this episode, Takashi Hashimoto. The episode mm. may not have necessarily had some insane bursts of animation, no. although there were some beautifully made cuts here and there, but the gorgeous effects were paired with the phenomenal visuals, which leads to the shot that I mentioned from Toshiro vs. Baz B. This is from the cut where Baz B uses Burner Finger 1 and it clashes yeah, with Hitsugaya's ice wall. The beauty of this scene is best found in 
in how Hitsugaya and Busby's powers visually interact, with Busby's flames piercing through Hitsugaya's ice wall, and of course we get this gorgeous shot of the flames making contact with Hitsugaya, as well as the colours of his flames are reflected all over the ice, which in my opinion, the anime does such a better job in comparison to the manga of conveying. All in all, this was a visually strong episode with equally strong effects and animation, as well as overall okay character animation. I can't wait until we start to reach the more hype moments of this second core, because there are so many more moments that I'm looking forward to seeing adapted by Taguchi and the team. Episode 15 was absolutely phenomenal. We had so much material swapped around from the manga, with the sequence of events being improved upon I believe in the anime. Unnecessary material was cut down and we had some heroic Omida scenes, as well as Hashwald speaking with the Sternritter during an anime exclusive scene at the start of the episode, and not to mention the jaw dropping post credit scene that we had, which possibly reveals the true name of the Soul King or the name of the path that Ichigo is currently walking down. Now episode 16 is titled The Fundamental Virulence, and it continues on from the end of chapter 551, adapting more of the second invasion of the Quincy. This episode has certainly left us with a lot more questions than answers, especially following that one minute post credit scene where Ichibei was reading that poem from these scrolls, and Ichigo was walking down that path which was just unsettling to say the least. The post credit scene basically opens with Ichigo still in the secret shrine that Ichibei had brought him to in episode 14. We see Ichigo walk in this strange room and it appears as though he's struggling to walk in that atmosphere. All of this happens while Ichibei runs very eerie commentary in the background, and if you want to hear my thoughts on this scene in particular, then I'd recommend that you watch my manga vs anime comparison video which I'm going to be dropping tomorrow. In that video, I'll- Another week has come and gone, and it's time. Okay, good. Uh, but yeah, my thoughts on the my thoughts on the episode was like it was pretty good. It was pretty good. It wasn't the best episode, obviously, but it was still pretty good. And you got a good understanding of where the uh, soul society come from, where you know where the soul society come from, where them niggas has been hiding, where bro, it's fucking crazy. Them niggas is really like like that. The Quincy's is really like that. Huh? Hold up, we got a we got a heavily delusion kill count. Oh, we might watch this John. This is my favorite clip though. Hold up. Maru? Maru? Let me let me change the title. I was reacting to the anime. I ain't gonna lie. I don't know if we're gonna keep reacting to the anime. I don't know if I'm gonna play the game. I don't know. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know if I'm gonna keep streaming for long. Because today I really don't figure sh- like streaming for long, if I'll be honest. But I do thank y'all for coming through. Appreciate y'all. I do love y'all. You know, supporting your boy. We finna react to Heavily Delusion for a little bit. Come through. Anime. Reaction. I ain't gonna lie, I'm so I love anime so much, bro. It's kind of sad. Not kind of sad. It's not bad. The fact that I actually like a genre of watching something because I never used to really watch shows. Never. I literally started watching Naruto last year. I literally started watching Bleach this year. I watched Attack on Titan last year. When I tell y'all, like, I just really started. Like I've been into anime. I already knew him like shit already, but it's not as much as I know now. I started. I just started watching Jujutsu Kaisen. I started watching Jujutsu Kaisen, Demon Slayer, and and something else. I'm supposed to be watching something else at the same time, and that's because Jujutsu. Kaisen, I had to catch up to Jujutsu Kaisen real fast. I already know what happens, and I already know what goes on. And I'm boy, hey, I'm trying to do a watch party with my dogs for season two. Rent a girlfriend. I guess I'm gonna watch that. I don't. I don't know. I guess niggas too excited for that. That hoe is. Should be way better than what the fuck it is, bro. Yeah, like a, oh my god. Uh, we supposed to watch a heavily delusion clip, and I'm about to go off on on an anime that have nothing to do with this. Nothing. If y'all know an anime called Domestic Girlfriend, watch it. The, the season is good. It's just the manga ending is so, it's a sell, bro. It, it was on my mind for a week. That's how bad it was, bro. Like, <laughs> 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 
役に立つ本がないかなと思ってあーちょっと見なくていいからいや見てもねえし僕が帰ってきた時いなくなってるの My nigga got caught looking at porn, bro. My bitch that he like. Damn. If y'all know heavy juice and y'all know that in in this this nigga mind is a guy. But what y'all haven't been noticing is that he's slowly turning into a woman. He slowly is. I don't think he realized how open he is with Maru. Even though he's supposed to be, or she's supposed to be, quote unquote, his bodyguard. She don't realize how close she is with him. And she definitely know how much this nigga love her. Jesus Christ. I mean, I know, I know when a nigga is in love. Boy, that nigga is willing to do anything. Damn, I want to be a nerd right now. I ain't gonna lie. Hold up. I gotta, tell, I, gotta, I gotta go back to being Mark. That's the best part. Oh, man. I'm not going to be a good person. 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 Y'all individuals obviously know what happened. My boy was. My boy said I wasn't halfway anyway, so. It's, but even so. That nigga. <laughs> hold on, that nigga. Hold on, hold on. But that nigga just. Oh my god. Yo, that nigga just had to portray his niggas being like bigger than what the hell she felt. Oh my god. I gotta get my nigga credit. Hey. Dap him up, man. Yo. Hey. <laughs> you know niggas be capping, bro. You know that. <laughs> but yeah, so basically to understand the clip, she was scared that um that Maru got taken away because people were looking after her, looking for him. Like, that's how she knew, and she immediately rushed to the apartment, worried. Oh, this this right here. Let me tell y'all. When niggas when niggas seen this happen in the anime. You never see niggas so mad in their lives, bro. I've never seen niggas so. The only, the only anime I've seen people be so controversial over is Domestic Girlfriend, and the in Domestic Girlfriend, this nigga was fucking with like two steps, two steps of sisters. But the thing about it is that he already knew both of them before, like the step sibling shit, like before my nigga. He already knew them before they became step siblings. He had sex with his stepsister before she became his stepsister, and he had a crush on the other stepsister before they became step siblings. It's so much, bro. I seen the, to basically to describe it, a nigga said it has more drama than a soap opera. I've never seen something so true in my life, bro. Like, that shit got so much drama. It's funny as a bitch, bro. I promise you, bro. It is funny as a bitch. I, I advise y'all to watch it. I'm not gonna lie. I advise y'all to watch um, Domestic Girlfriend or read it. Whatever the case may be. That hoe is funny, bro. I always suggest some anime to y'all. I suggested one some uh, the other day. Uh, if y'all not watching Demon Slayer or Jujutsu Kaisen, get to it. I'm not gonna lie. Get to it. But we gonna watch the Kill Cat. Kind of fuck shit, freak shit, this nigga on. But let's just see if it's about heavy juice. Okay, it is. We cool enough. Hold up. The fuck anime is this? Hold up, I ain't gonna lie, this shit looking kind of raw. Am I tripping? This, 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 this whole kind of, this whole look kind of, yeah, we finna react to that. That whole look kind of lit. Hold up. I'm sorry, bro. Yo, so my name is Shiri, and this is Dan. Oh, 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 he finna be talking. Okay, my bad, bitch. I don't even know how you work, operate your videos, bro. I'll be talking in my streams, my nigga. I talk a lot. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to disrespect. You feel? 
Like, I ain't gonna do that. I'm not trying to disrespect you, though, for real. So, I'm gonna respect him. I'm gonna let him talk. I'm gonna let him get his points off. It's a kill count, though. I like this, though. This low-key kind of, like, um, dead meat for anime. I like that. Anime kill count where we dialed up the kills in anime. Today, we're breaking down the kills in Heavenly Delusion, released in the spring of 2023. Heavenly Delusion is an adventure anime with a debatably quality animation. The anime series is based from a Japanese manga. I'm low key kind of like, I, I be laughing when I see people leave my streams because I'm like, damn, I must be talking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but I do not give a, I couldn't give less of a fuck, my nigga. I ain't gonna lie. I could not care less. Oh, the only anime I know that has a lot of gore is. Oh my bad, bro. I didn't even know this nigga was typing. Yo, this is what I be saying. I don't know. Don't I have. Yeah, y'all can see the chat box. Y'all see it. I can't. Like. Normally, I should be getting an alert. Bruh, now I feel bad. Oh my god. <laughs> this shit always happens. I swear to god. I'm not even joking, but I feel so bad. He said, have you seen the new unofficial trailer for Maxine, the black guy from Breaking Bad is in it? That whole scene raw. Oh, my God. That was three minutes ago. I don't know if this motherfucker's still here. Bro, let me let me, let me me explain. Let me explain how my, how my setup is. I am streaming on a laptop. I don't have another um browser up. The only way I can see your message is if, like, I look up on my phone, and I have to tell my phone is off so I can, like, really lock onto my stream. So I apologize, bro. Thank y'all. Thank you for coming through, bro. I'm pretty sure if I would have chopped it up, blah, 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 you would have been down. You would have probably even followed. That's my bad, bitch, dog. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry, bro. The only enemy I know is that has a lot of gore is Gersha when they cry. When they cry. I feel bad, bro. My bad. Hey, appreciate the fuck, bro. Hey, look, my bad, bro. I did not know. You know what I'm saying? I ain't know, bro. Like, you didn't even have to follow. I appreciate it, though. But, like, my bad, bro. I feel so bad. I'm not even joking. When I, you not the first person chat I, I missed, bro. And I missed it. I got missed another nigga chat. He says like he followed me on some other shit. And I'm like, oh, he was asking about a game, bro. I feel so bad. I apologize, but uh, I'm gonna suggest. Let me know what kind of genre you in. You in the, you like the Breaking Bad kind of shit. I fuck with Breaking Bad. Uh, next scene. I haven't seen the unofficial trailer. I ain't gonna lie. I haven't seen the teaser. I ain't gonna lie. That whole do sound raw. But I'm gonna suggest like the um, the main things that I watch, bro. I'm not gonna hold you. Is anime. Like the main things I watch is anime. So one of the animes I suggest is this, bro. Heavily Delusion. I promise you, it's gonna be one of the best animes you ever touched in your life because it's a unique one. It's kind of like um, fairy tale. Like, if y'all watch fairy tales, it's like that. But, like, it has more potential to it. Not a lot of people know of the anime, too. You get what I mean? So, if you if you into that kind of shit, like, this is the kind of shit I'm into. I watch mostly studio. Okay, okay. So, you watch a specific studio. My boy, you got to brand out the studios, my boy. You got to you gotta expand, my boy. You got to, yeah, you got to, yeah. I don't, but the thing about it is that. You saying specific studios, I don't really watch specific studios. Like, for example, Bleach is produced by Studio something, Parrot, Parrot, Paradox. I don't know how to fucking say it, but it's something with a P. But I also watch One Piece. I also watch Dragon Ball. I also watch Naruto. But those are like the GOAT Shonies. You get what I mean? So, I, I say this. You got to, you got to, you got to change it up. You gotta, you gotta expand. You gotta expand your your studios. You feel me? And uh, but no, all just aside, there's a bunch of great animes. It's a, it's a lot of them. It's a lot of great animes, and I'll suggest some to you if you're interested. If you're not interested, then that's fine. If you're not, if you is, let me know. I'll let you know. I'll talk to you about it. Blah 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 blah. Just let me know, and I, you know, say I'll, I'll see. I'll try to see your comment now because I feel bad. I feel so bad. I might actually leave my phone open, so we can, so I can lock in and actually be talking to my chat. I'm not used to having a chat, bro. I'm not. My bad. Series written and illustrated by Masakazu Ishiguro, produced by Production. 
none of y'all niggas better be laughing at his voice. IG and directed by Hirotaka Mori and written by Makoto Fukami. The story is divided into two storylines, with one following the adventures of Maru and Kiroko. Mm -hmm. Kiroko is Maru's supposed bodyguard, but Kiroko has a. I heard of that anime. I didn't touch it yet, though, bro. That you, I ain't gonna lie. You suggested me some good animes, bro. You suggested me some good animes. I appreciate it because I be hearing about these hoes. I be hearing about them, especially from um, YouTube more specifically. Because Twitter, they only stick around the same three or four animes, and not even four. It literally just be Dragon Ball, One Piece, and then Naruto. And I'm a not, Dragon Ball is my favorite anime, and so is Naruto. And I like One Piece. Not, One Piece is not my favorite anime, but I like it. You don't really see a lot of stuff about... You might see some stuff about little shows. Like, uh, man, what's, a, what's a little show name show that niggas really don't be watching? Uh, most seriously, like, Heavenly Delusion. This is like... This is a shonen anime, basically. But it's more like it's it's a it's a part show name, but something else. You get what I mean? It's it's a lot. So this this is the kind of anime you expect niggas on Crunchyroll to love, cause it's low key, it's good, it has a great storyline, blah 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 blah. But it's like, hey, bro, I don't even know, bro. You suggested me some good anime. Anime I watch with Ernie. Anime. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, that's that's some unique animes, bro. Unique. Unique. I like that. Keep that hoe up, my boy. Keep that hoe up. I like the unique animes. I love it. Good shit. If niggas are on Angels are Cop. Or Angels are Cop. Or niggas are on. Gundam Zero found, sound familiar, bro. Damn. Perfect Blue is the go of anime. Hey, my boy, that's your opinion. That's your opinion. Let, hey, look, look, look. I, I'm never going to be mad at somebody else's opinion. I'm, no. Like, I, I'm, I'm not going to be mad at your opinion. Because I can see that you're not just a, hey, a Kira, hey. Wait, have you watched Death Note? Have you watched Death Note? Oh, you, yeah, you went to that murder mystery. Yeah, watch Death Note, bro. If you've never seen Death Note, boy, yeah. Oh, you seen Death Note? All right, bro. My nigga, yo, I love Death Note, bro. Death Note is fire. But yeah, you went to that murder mystery shit. I like that. That shit different. Let me see what Perfect Blue is, because I don't really know it. Perfect Blue is a thriller mystery? Hey. Okay, okay. Okay. What's the main plot of Perfect Blue? A pop singer give up her her career to become an actress, but she slowly goes insane, and when she starts be being stalked by an obsessed fan, and what seems to be a ghost of her past. Ooh, that whole sound raw. Now, I ain't gonna lie, that whole do sound raw. I like that. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. That whole do sound raw. Mm. Yeah, that's what I know. These are some animes that make me cry. Example, Grave of the Fireflies and Barefoot Chain. Grave of the Fireflies sound familiar. Like, all the anime, like, some of the animes I do not know what you're talking about, but then some of them sound familiar, like I heard from other people. I ain't gonna lie. But these are some animes that's really emotional. Okay, I fuck with that. I mess with that. I mess with that. Okay, Grave of the Fireflies. Let's see that because I might watch that bit tonight. I might watch Perfect Blue tonight because that whole sound interesting. Oh, you really be watching movies? Hmm, this whole tragic though. These are some, these some OG movies. That's probably why I really don't know. It's so gas, though. Gabriel Five Fives is one of the best. It looks at the impact on home front during the war. Damn. 
It's a tale of survival in some of the worst possible conditions, which makes the tragedy of our two leads not surviving the ordeals the film put them through even worse, especially when the factors in their age. They look real young, too. So it's two young niggas, like two young people just trying to survive. That whole sound raw. That whole sound raw. Hey, I appreciate you for for showing me this because not only are they based on real events. <laughs> yeah, thank you, bro. The reason I say uh, thank you is because well, these are some animes I've been I've been looking for these kind of animes. These animes that's like kind of sad based on true events and stuff like that because it seems so interesting to me, and I appreciate you for showing that. Because I like, I'm a kind of like, I'm that kind of person that loves, um, how do I say this? I like history when it's like about war. So, or like when somebody's getting started, I like that murder mystery suspense kind of shit too. I love that. Because I used to watch ID, like Investigation Discovery, bro. I used to love the murder mysteries. Like the, J- the JCSs and, bro, I love them. Beth Virginia is about the atomic bombing of Hiroshima. Oh my god, they made that. They made it. They made an anime of that. I know that hoe was traumatic. I know it is. Yeah, you. Yeah, you put me on, bro. Thank you, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Hold up. I'm gonna see if my. Hold up. Thank you, bro. If you got any more animes you suggest me to watch, let me know. Like. Come to just type. Either if anybody's in here, I don't care. Any one of y'all, just suggest some animes to me. There's a scene where everybody was melting and their eyes were popping out. Whoa. Yeah, I'm, but the thing, ooh, now you got me wanting to watch, like, the, the, like the, the catastrophe of it. Because that shit was catastrophic, especially to the Japanese, like, especially to those areas and the people surrounding I know people's families was traumatized. Even still, bro. I think some people are just barely being able to go into Hiroshima and um Nagasaki. Bro. It's sad. It's so sad. Especially with like the way that you learn it in history. It's like, oh, we didn't have another choice. I mean, technically, in America, yes, we didn't have a choice. It was just we want the war to end. But we attacked civilians, bro. We killed civilians in order to end the war. The thing is, the movie was shown in my class when I was in history class in fourth grade. Damn. I ain't gonna lie. Hold up, my boy. Where you from? Where you from? Because the only thing I was watching in fourth grade was Mary Poppins. So I'm kind of jealous. We didn't watch no fire anime movies like this. Because not only do I say that it's fine, but it teaches people, like young kids, about the real world and what could happen. And they need to make sure that they're safe. That's the main thing. I hate the fact that people, like when you're younger, um, yes, you are able to do anything that you want or anything that you want to achieve. You, you are able to go for it. But they don't teach you the real world about how selfish other people is around you. Nor do they teach you about, like, really other countries and, like, how their culture is because they don't get it. Like a, they don't get an understanding of how it is. For example, if I was to go to um, if I was to go to China, or Canada or Dubai, I probably wouldn't get an understanding from their culture just by me reading on it. I could get a, I could get a somewhat semi understanding, but unless if I'm there, I will not understand what they go through, what they deal with, how they treat the people, how everybody's treated, if it's racist or anything like that. Because as a young black man, I have to make sure that I don't go to a racist area. I don't want to put myself or my people or the people like my, my family, when I say my people, in territorial, territorial like environments, especially like Dubai. Dubai, you ha- they treat women so different down there. They treat women so differently, and it's like, whoa, okay. I don't know if I ever want to go there. It's a beautiful place, and it has a bunch of scenery, but it's just so scary. It's scary, though. That's the real scary part. It's scary. So, you know, when you 
understand and you try to see these other cultures, I would probably do a lecture if I could get it to a university about the impact of a nuclear war on mankind. Bro, and then the fact that the fact that people, ooh, this is becoming a, this not even about anime, this is just about real life shit. I'm fine with this, though. I like this. The thing about it is that when it's like, hold on. If you were able to do a lecture, that's going to teach the people in that university to, like, the real world. Because even people that's in college don't know understand the real world. Not a lot of people are mature. They might do. They might still be doing dumb shit. Like they don't understand how precious the life they have is. You know. And also, the reason why I say thank you for the animes is because you suggested some some animes, some really fire animes that me and my girl could like watch. And not only that, just watch, it teaches us lessons about what people from other cultures had to deal with or tolerate. Some people might be mature enough to have interest, and that's what's important. You're absolutely right. because But we do have to atone for the people that's not mature. And we have to symbolize it for them in, a, in some kind of way. But the people that is mature, they're going to understand your lecture and try to take it for the best knowledge that they can. And I love that, that you will want to do a lecture especially for young adult people or even people that's just adults in general, not just young, but you know, it, I like that though. I like that. I like that a lot. Good shit. That teaches that. And just so you know, uh, I am one of those adult people. I'm young as a bit. It's just, I'm more mature than my age group. Uh, I'm not old at all. I literally just hit adulthood. So, yeah. I'm not going to lie. I appreciate you for, like, telling me these animes and then you telling me, like, what you would like to do for um the, young, the younger audiences. Not the only younger audiences, but the people that is about to step into a bigger adulthood or a bigger responsibility and to understand, like, the true, like, understanding of what the world could be. I like that. I'm 16. I already have dreams. Hey, if you got dreams, my boy, follow them shits. Follow them. If you want to do that, go ahead. You sound, you, you, it seemed like you went to murder mystery, and that's fire. So, what do you want to do? I'm low-key wondering if you want to be a, a, a forensics investigator, forensics pathologist. That seems like a great job for you, if that's what you're into. But in reality, it seems like you could do a lecture, like a history type shit. That whole seems fire. That whole seems gas. I don't know how delete, delayed my stream is. I was gifted artistically, and I was wondering if I could become a fashion designer or architect. Hey, let me tell you something. If that's what you want to do, by all means, you got it. You got it. Find some people that's around you that's willing to support, whether it's financially, emotionally, mentally, it don't matter. Because when you are so focused, when you have people surrounding you, is what I mean. When you have people surrounding you and they love you and they appreciate you and they actually want to see you do their best, it don't matter what you do, they're going to always support you. And make sure that you're good and try to make the best of your living. They won't do it in, in return. I won't say that they won't expect it, something in return, but they're doing it in to help you feel motivated and let you know that you're not by yourself. Like I said, <clears throat> the main thing, though, is mentally and emotionally. Don't worry about the financial situation because eventually it's going to solve itself if you are motivated and you have a will to, you know, get that kind of bread. But good shit. If do you have any art? I would like to see your art. Like I was just say, I would love to see your art. Like if you if do you post them bitches on Instagram, TikTok, let me know. Yeah, I do to my fashion art mostly on paper. That don't matter. 
Because art is a way of expressing yourself. And that's the main thing. I have both. Send them. Send them. I'm going to look at it on my phone. And then I'll look at it on my stream. Fashion art and it's no paper. That is fun because you have a you also have an ideal of what you want to make and what you want to do. I have no judge. I'm not going to judge you. And I'm going to motivate you and push you to do that. Regardless of what age you in. I don't give a, I don't give a fuck. You 16, 15, 13, I don't care. I, I genuinely don't care. I want to see people be successful and enjoy their life. So let me know. Like, send them to me. Like, send me your um, TikTok or Instagram. Because I actually genuinely do want to see your art. Pushing the BMW. Oh my god. Good shit. This nigga dreads about long as shit. See, think about it on TikTok, bro. I don't know if y'all gonna see something not crazy, but like funny. You said you had the same profile picture. Let's check IG first, cause what them call it be tweeting, bro. Confused. The hell is this? Why is this on my feed? I don't know none of these bitches. My bad, excuse me. Excuse my language. Oh, okay. Nah, it's not the fact that I, I know people curse. It's just the fact, like, I don't know. I hate cursing a lot. I'm going to text you. I'm going to say, yo, send me your art because I would like to see it. My IG profile picture said 80 mall with metal tree pole pillars. Yeah. Okay, I thought it too. All right, there I sent it. I have a photo with me and my lady as my profile picture. We both got our glasses on. And I look like a light skinned thot. That's it. I would like to see your art, bro. 
I'm on a W, I'm on a 4G, switch up the 4G, yeah. Man, the parachute clip and then pull it, I'm on a all again. Don't even know. Damn, I'm supposed to do, be doing reactions. This is actually kind of interesting. Herman's asked for the dunk. My ass is it's so clear. Look better than Guess. I didn't look up Dukas. Dukas. Why did Dukas pop up? And I ain't gonna lie, I'm happy as a bear because I had my first TikTok video to hit 100 likes. Let's go. My IG username is. Uh, this shit. Mark underscore 2K. It's in my request and it's in my bio for my Twitch. Yo, oh my God. I was sorry, I was going through like, oh, did you follow me on TikTok? I don't know if I sell TikTok. That's the thing. <laughs> Hold up, my nigga Sparkle just uploaded. Oh, I thought he did. Then I got 10K likes. Okay. Good shit, boy. 10,000 likes is insane. I love that. Good shit, boy. I'm not trying to point you out either, by the way. By the way, I, I I sent you the message on ID. I'm a, I mean, I'm gonna keep going with the stream though. I'm gonna wait. <laughs> Angry grandma. I haven't watched no shit like that in a minute. The goal of her own, which is finding her missing friend Robin. The other storyline is centered around a bunch of children who live in a school. They are not any ordinary children because they all have their own unique powers. Oh, I forgot to mention, there are monsters in this anime. The monsters design are pretty gnarly and weird, and they devour humans. There's no surprise to that. Now let's see how many died in Heavenly Delusion and count them up. If it's on stream, off stream, I don't care. Like, I want to see it. Because I ain't gonna lie, that whole raw, I might be taking that bit of my profile picture. But I'm gonna give you credit. But that's because I want to show you, like, appreciation. I'll just stop. I'll make that bit my TikTok. I want to see that whole raw. I want to see if you could, like, I know, I'm pretty sure you could draw. I want to see it, bro. <laughs> 
私の息子なの守ってくれてる私に乱暴しようとした奴らから助けてくれたこともあったのわ、はあ、かりましたお姉ちゃんどっちにしても戦う手段がないし危険がないなら殺す必要もないかあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあがないなら殺す必要もないか Maru is literally just killing his mom's friends. Maru is literally killing his mom's friends. And it's crazy to me how he's killing his mother's friends. And it's like, obviously, he d o n t feel a connection because he d o n t know him. Like, he was never raised up with his mama. He was never, his mama d o n t even know that he exists. When his mama s e e him, t h e y gonna think, s h e gonna think that he's Yamato. It sucks, man. <laughs> Burst that nigga hard out. Ooh, that hoe up there. s t o k i t a Mase, me n a n i s h i r a t a n i Chiri Kinshi no Mukoni. Taima o Tsmeta Hako ga ippa aru to omotta yo. Tairiou no d a n b o l e to Kansou Taima ni Suibun o uba ware ta koitsu wa. Tan naru uchi aage rare ta sakana da. o c h i t s u i t e hitotsu de mo o If you actually look at, if you actually look at、uh, Kiriko, you could see that she's posed like a nigga, like a guy. You could see the pose, bro. That's how a man sits. That lets you know he still h a v e the mindset of a, of a guy. She's basically a tomboy. And that turned this nigga on. Tanna r u c h i a g e r a r e t a s a k a n a d a o c h t e i t e hitotsu de mo ook. Mawari no joho o eta ho ga katsu. Boku a so yat dek dek tanda. No, no, no. Okay. Ooh, she also l o o k like a guy too. Let me show you something. Hold up, before I do that, because I actually do want to, because you, you want to something. Hold up, I want to make sure I, I watch a little bit of this before I, 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 we talk about the heavenly delusion thing.、Uh, there we go. Just. Maru don't have a sister. I don't even know why that was a search up. Like, what the hell? Kakurita left the Gilsin Army. Today we're counting the Gilsin Jonji Ito Minyak, Japanese tale. Ain't this what she was talking about? It is! I was like, so this is I found interesting. I ain't p e e p this is shit that she was talking about. So Makab, released in the winter of 2023. Jonji Ito Minyak, Japanese Tales of the Makab, is a Japanese original net animation series. Produced by Studio Dean and directed by Shinobu Takashira. 
It adopts various from Junji Ito, including the hanging balloons, Suichi, and Tommy. The series is created by Junji Ito, directed by Shinobu Tagashira, written by Kaoru Sawada, music by Yuki Ayashi, and produced by Studio Dean. A quote to say, this disturbing. You know what? I'm not for to watch the kill count. I just wanted to see a little bit of this, but the only reason I wanted to watch the Heavenly Delusion kill count is because I know what happens. I actually genuinely want to watch this. So I'm going to say that to myself. I know the Heavenly Delusion. I know who dies, but we're going to go back to the video. So we're going to go to my favorite death. That, that death was just sad. This death was just sad. Damn, bruh. Because just before this, but just before he died, he tried to kiss Tokyo. And, and Tokyo, like, ran away from, out of shock and surprise. Like, she was like, whoa, whoa, I didn't know you wanted to do that, blah, 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 blah. All right, bet. Had me disturbed with the glasses. That's the only episode? Bro, I seen the first two seconds, 30 seconds of whatever the intro was, and that low-key disturbed me. <laughs> but I'm fine with that, though. I'm fine with being disturbed. Look, okay. But this not my this not my favorite death. This is sad. She lost her friend, bro. R.I.P. my dog, man. I don't even remember the nigga name, but R.I.P. my dog, man. Oh, look how sad she was. Look how sad. Bosha. <laughs> Shimomoto kun wa tasukara nakatta no ka. Nanda yo, genki nai na. Yuube no ikyoi wa doko itta? Bosha, dame datta te. Kesa hayaku ni shinjatta te. Sekkaku tasukete moratta no ni ne. Damn. Hmm. Hiruko da. Tsubushita yo. Please, please show the part where that nigga try to kiss me. No, he don't. He don't. I guess he don't show it, bro. All right, I gotta go to my favorite death for real. Oh man, my nigga Shiro. It is it. Yeah, yeah. This is it. Bro. He slit that nigga throat because he thought this nigga snitch. This is my favorite death. This is my favorite death. The whole time this bitch act like she was was in a wheelchair because she couldn't walk. She told this bitch, she ran away and said, You're so useless. Like, wait, hold the fuck up, cause I just had a story on my. Oh, I was gonna say. So, <laughs> look at this shit, but but just look. But she got up mad as shit. She said, "You so useless." Just look. Before we get to the kills, let us. I know I probably shouldn't be laughing at a nigga. Oh, hold up. Before, before, before we see, you see that, hold on. Let's, let's go to this. Let's go to this. So, oh my God. So if you ever was to watch this show, listen, if any of y'all was to ever watch this show, episode 12 is going to piss y'all niggas off. Just so you know, the girl does get graped and it's very disturbing very disturbing so if y'all want to skip through that i understand because i have no issue with y'all skipping through that it's too hot i'm not even going to explain like what who did it what did it blah blah blah, blah. matter of fact yeah that name y'all see gone i don't even know who i don't even know who, who who mobbing is so look so look so look and this is for you because you said oh he kind of looked like a girl too a, a boy too right so this is for you I want you to. I want you to look at this. This is for y'all. I want y'all to see. Help for massaging. What? It's 
swipe allow. Nigga, allow? The fuck? She like the short lady from The Incredibles. <laughs> I don't know how that's misogyny. My bad. She looks like a short lady from <laughs> the bar. You talking about this one bit? Nah, I wouldn't even say that. Okay. Damn. Okay. Let's see. So this is Hiriko. This is Hiriko. I want you to understand. Hiriko. Hiriku. Or Hiriko. Hiriko. I think so. I think that's how you say his name. And his sister's name is Kiriko. Remember that. They missed the most important part. They missed the most important part. So basically, as his sister is holding him, like, like he hit. So if y'all didn't understand, his body, his arms is gone. Like his arms is eaten, and so is his lower half of his body. So he's eaten. He's about to die, right? He has his eyes open, but then he ha he closes them because he's about to pass out. Somebody kills his sister in the back of the head. <laughs> She shot in the back of the head. Now look. It's supposed to be a gunshot right there. It's supposed to be a gunshot right there. So he has a memory with his sister. And everybody. So, hold on, hold on, cause she just, I don't, I don't know your gender. You just sent me some art. This one kind of nice. I mess with this one. I like this one too. This one nice. I mess with all of them. You told totally spy. I like that. I like that. Guess what? I'm whole spy. Say that one. You got you. You know what you gotta do. You gotta start plugging your shit because you only got one post, bro. I don't know if you. I don't know if you're a boy or a girl, so I don't know. I'm just keep saying, bro. So, bro, you gotta you gotta keep uploading though, bro. You have to keep posting. You only got one. You only got one post. You gotta keep posting, bro. Posted. So, as you see, his sister is walking away from him. Right? Oh, I forgot her name was like a T. I forgot. Talk about Haya. Talk about Haya. That don't even sound like Hiriko. Hiriko. Hana. You hear it? So. So, to, to basically explain, the doctor that was sent before, that was, that was, I sent these two patients 
the brother and the sister were both dying because one was dying of brain damage, and the other one was dying because half their body was fucking gone. So what did he do? He decided to do a brain transplant, a.k.a. he puts the brother brain inside the sister's body so they could both technically live on, right? So now he has to go with a, through a phase of where he's technically his sister now, even though his sister is, like, still there in a deeper conscious. Like she's still there. But it's his body and it's his control, basically. So that's why I'm saying it's a boy brain inside of a woman's body. It's unique, and that's why I mess with this show. It's a... <gasps> <laughs> Nigga, a group project in high school? Damn. What kind of group project y'all had? だから自分を弟だと思い込んでいるようです。私兄弟は2人とも瀕死の状態で担ぎ込まれた。最後に見たそんな急に無理だよ。you know so funny you want to know what's so funny she says this she says that but let me also show y'all something my nigga you know what i'm saying hold on, hold on. my boy model was kind of low-key spitting game you feel me like he was i ain't gonna he was putting that you know nah what i just seen was crazy face turned to the mirror just to see your sister like that is crazy but i ain't gonna lie after that traumatic experience that he that he slash they experienced in episode 12 it changed him or her for like ever it changed her or him whatever you want to call him it changed them it changed him in the aspect of him blaming him herself like him himself for you know kissing like not kissing but like her getting raped and not being able to protect his sister's body but also in the aspect that she knows that maru regardless will always love her and be there for her or him regardless like regardless of what happens maru will always care for her what <laughs> So, yeah. So look, at, look, at, on, look at my nigga Maru trying to, you know what I'm saying, spit some game. Just just look, just look. That boy, I ain't gonna lie, if anybody was put, he doing step back threes, like. He doing step back threes, and he doing, uh, 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 he doing them James Harden threes. Well, he, what? Splink. I'm going to live with you. Basically, she's saying she don't want to live on the farm. I'm going to live with you. 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 Hey, you! 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 You!
I ain't gonna lie. He 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 was going fast. I ain't gonna lie. My boy was. He was a little too quick. Look, that boy all immediately tried to go for a kiss, bro. <laughs> あのね、僕も真面目に話すから聞いて。僕この体は女なんだけど、こっちのつまり脳みそが男なんだ。だから僕男なんだ。は？いや、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、
I do that voice, but shit, that's not how I sing. But yeah, like he do it. He so I'm gonna just let my boy model cook, man. That nigga, that nigga Steph Curry with the three. Hey, ah, 気分的には三四回振られてるけど、もう一回聞いてくれよ。嫌だったらその石を川に放ってやめるから。I gotta remember what he said. If you don't like it, just throw that rock into the river and I'll stop. Peep at the parts where she actually throw the rock. Peep it. I'm not sure. そういう意味での好きにはなってないと思うし、ハルキがそんな。The concept of being a boy and being a being a girl and a girl being a boy reminds me of plot of Sleepaway Camp movie. How the fuck did that shit go? Oh! I do remember this movie. I, I was like. This movie look he seems familiar. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, let me. Yeah, I know what I know what exact part you talking about. Uh, you talking about the part where she got exposed and like it was an actual like penis. Like they used like somebody. Like oh my god, they actually used like somebody penis instead like a, a dick, bro. Like a, a dildo. Shit is crazy. But yeah, man, that plot is crazy. Cause I just remember, you just reminded me of that. Yes, the little boy was actually a girl, and she had her mouth open. Now it says she's a girl. <laughs> oh my god. Bruh, I never, no, look, I don't know who you are, I don't know anything about you, so I'm, but before I say what I say, I hope I don't offend you, if you part of an LGBTQ or, you know, anything of the sort, I never met so many gay people in my life, and I don't have an issue with it, keep that in mind, I don't have no issue with no gay people, or transgender, uh, transformers, <coughs> sorry, transformers. I don't have no issues with it. Hold up, before I keep going. Okay. Now, I have no issues. I ain't part of none of that. Nothing, so that's fine. Oh, yeah. So, like I said, I have no issues with none of them. I've never met so many gay people in my life. No issue with it. I've never seen so many people like, like come attack. Like I've never seen people get fucking quote unquote canceled. I, I never seen niggas get canceled for being a straight male. Genuinely, that's not I, that's why I, I'm friends with a pansexual. So yeah, hey, that's cool. That's a unique. Um, but like like I'm saying though, like, well, I'm a straight male, and I did not even want to be on Twitter because I know if I say I don't, I don't like transgenders. Transformers, free. Gotta remember I'm on Twitter, bro. I said Twitter. I mean Twitch. Twitter's a different breed. I swear to God, you will. You could say the most correct thing. You could say grape is bad, and they will be like, "What you mean grape is bad? People can't do what they ever they want to do." And a, a thousands of people will like that tweet. It, it's so confusing. It's so confusing. Basically, Twitter is all about dick riding. 
That's how I see it. Honey, skin on the car. But hold on, we gonna, we gonna, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before I keep going, like, hold up. Like, we gonna, hold up, my boy. We gonna, we gonna get back to the conversations, my boy. But we gonna, we gonna, we gonna watch my boy Maru confess to Kiriko. You feel me? You gotta, but I want you to specifically, like, watch the parts, though. Watch how Kiriko acts and when she throws the rock. その切り子って人はよっぽ友達にはなってたかもしれない。まあ、もし俺と春樹が出会っても友達にはなってたかもしれないが、そういう意味での好きにはなってないと思うし、春樹がそんなに好きなんだから、その切り子って人はよっぽど素敵な人なんだろう。うん。それは間違いないけど。まあ、俺が切り子さんを好きになるかはわからない。な俺はあんたが好きなんだ春樹でもキリコでもなくあんたがだあんたは強え Listen. ずっと Listen My boy said So what he's saying is If you were actually you and your body We will be close friends But I will not be in love with you I'm pretty sure your sister is a great person But how you talk about them And, and, and appreciate them and love her Blah 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 but I don't think I would have fell in love with her. You are the one I fell in love with. Whatever you're dealing with, I'm going to be here. You take care of me. Look, you all take care of me and see the things, see things right, like the right way. So, that's what I'm saying. It's not Haruki, not Kiriko. It's you. Remember that. That is really important. It's it's important. He's basically saying, don't be afraid and don't be ashamed. Like it's okay to be like it's okay to feel away, but you can't keep blaming that on you. You have to love yourself because if because I love you, you have to. You are a great person. There's no reason why you should be over here blaming yourself for that kind of situation and what happened. It's it's the way that he the way that that nigga put it, bro. It's fire. Ruki demo, Kiriko demo, nak. Anta ga da. Anta wa tsue. Zutto mendo mite moratta. Anta no mite ru mono wa tadashi. Kore kara mo taskete moraanai to. Kuruma no unten mo. Meshi o tsukuru dokoro ka atatame no osu no mo. Ore wa nan mo umaku dekin. Daga anta ga abune toki wa. Ore ga mamoru. これからは必ず俺が守る。So peep. <sighs> so so I want you to understand that part. Hold up. So I want you to peep that. She threw the rock in once he said that I'm going to take care of you. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? This is why she threw the rock. Basically, basically, she's supposed to be like his guardian, and the fact that she was <coughs> able to protect herself, it makes her feel like. <coughs> It makes her feel away, but the fact that he protected her made her feel even more away because she's supposed to be his guardian. That's why. <laughs> so yeah, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I love this anime. I love it so much. It's a good anime because it has a lot of diversity and it has a lot of. I am not playing that. Nope. Freak ass niggas. We are about to see what my boy Maru did to this nigga. Cause what Maru did, that boy was on a mission and was trying to murder that nigga. And I had no issues with it. Whoa! <laughs> Don't be looking at that. I didn't even know my YouTube was on. I didn't even know that was <laughs> I didn't know that was on there. That's my content, bro.
but yes, like I said, but but we can go back to the conversation now. Yes, Twitter is a completely different breed. I hate Twitter. Like I'm only there for the anime that I love. But other than that, I don't use it like at all. I just scroll through like an anime, a football, some basketball stuff. That's it. See, yeah, now you're bringing up curse videos. You got it, bro. I did not need to know about the curse videos, dog. Like the haunted house video. <laughs> this nigga. Haunted house videos is crazy. I'm not. No. No. I don't even. No. Do you have. I hope you don't have Twitter. Oh, oh God. Can't get it out of my head. You. This nigga got Twitter. Excuse me. You at 16. Dude or ma'am, you need to delete that. <laughs> I'll just, uh, I'm not even joking. Because Twitter is not good for the young mind. Why am I saying that like I'm so much older than you? You can have Twitter. It's just like, you gotta, the curse videos is crazy. You gotta get off of that kind of Twitter. Even TikTok is becoming Twitter. I wouldn't say that. I would definitely not say that. Mm -mm. It's toxic. TikTok has always been, always been toxic since Triller. But that's is not as toxic as which one call it. Like that's is not as toxic as um uh, motherfucking um uh, as which one like yeah, not as toxic as Twitter. But that that bit toxic. It is toxic. That bit get it toxic. Why is all like? God dang, I'm not bad, bro. I need to turn off this auto mod. I'm sorry. It was just some niggas that came through and spammed the N-word so many times. Not too long ago, I saw a slaw show of where Avatar character had his slong out. Uh. <laughs> Wait, are you talking about, like, like uh, the legendary? The, what's the legendary? Like, the last airbender? <coughs> or, like, Avatar, like, the blue people? The movies? Oh my god. I know that bit was blue and it looked like it, it was infected. Do not. You don't. You good, man. You good, Mo. Yeah, yeah. And the. Ne Oh, nah, I know exactly what video, the fact, yo, hold on, hold on, let me, I'm gonna go on a rant, matter of fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull up my YouTube analytics, I don't give a fuck, look, I don't, I don't care, I'm not even gonna upload this video, blah, 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 I don't, no, at first I was, but I was like, I'm not gonna have as, like, my videos, bro, there's no point, right, so look, my videos recently has not been doing well, and I'm fine with that, I don't really care. It's just more of the fact I know I've been taking out the whatchamacallit, the, um, the, uh, I forgot what that whole called, bro. But it's like when you in rotation and people can actually, like, see your content. Last time I was in rotation was, like, a month ago. And I'm, like, I'm not tripping about my views. Like, I don't really care about it no more. There's no point in caring about it. There's no point. I'm going to just keep grinding. I'm going to keep doing what I can do, right? So, you know what I'm saying? You look at it. Bro, that Nair video got two, 30 plus million views. If you think I'm about to go to it, no, I'm not. I'm just telling y'all. That Nair video is crazy. That nigga said, I'm going to show y'all how hairy my butthole is. Immediately spread it his ass cheeks. And you seen his aim. Nigga, I got taken down. Listen. I got, I got banned for a week off youtube because a nigga said in my video dumb r word nigga what's worse i ain't gonna lie saying that is saying that in my video is crazy i'm not too mad about it but a nigga spreading his ass cheeks towards young people dick hanging out you like no that's not no that's not okay you know? Oh, nah. You searched it up? I don't know why you would search it up, bro. I have no idea why you would do that to yourself. You shouldn't. You you shouldn't have searched it up, bro. Because I know that whole world. I know it is. 
He said, this is how hairy my butthole is. Turned around, immediately spreaded his cheeks. My friend convinced me. Big mistake. That friend is not your friend. I'm playing, I'm playing. I ain't gonna lie. My friend sent it to me in my um, group chat. I'm glad I did not look. Because cause I just seen my whole, my other friends say, yo, Jaden, you gay. Ah, oh, dang. Yo, Jay, you gay. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, man. That man got it, bro. I ain't gonna lie. He got it. But look at the pain my boy. So fuck. Oh, he beat the fuck out of that nigga. Nanda. She had a dream of like her sister seeing her, him. いいもの。姉ちゃんのことなら生きてるのかもしれない。僕の頭が姉ちゃんの体になじんで。あ。えっと。ロビンのあの顔何も考えたくない。助けて。ほら。<笑> I'm sorry, but I do not see. No, 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 I don't see the. I don't see the similarity. Nah, I don't see the similarity. I think his her, like the sister, like the actual sister, probably. But her right now, no. Man. Yo, the fact that he said, I wanted to punch the shit out this nigga. He said, did she take, did she take care of you down there too? That dude was in one of her dreams. That, this nigga, the one that, this is, I ain't gonna lie. I'm sorry, if you gonna watch this, this is, just so you know, this is the dude that grapes her. Um... This was one of her role models. This was one of her role models when she was a boy. Like, when he was, like, in his body. This is one of the dudes that always looked out for him. She Look at what my nigga said. My nigga said, did Haruki also take care of you down there? Oh, my God, bro. I know this nigga model was heated, bro. Look at my nigga face. Tell me what you're doing. The fact that she said that is crazy. My nigga not want to talk. Oh, damn, bully the stupid out. Oh, my God, you finna bust in your head. No! No, 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 no. Hell, nope, 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 nope. We finna, nope. Yep, we finna, no. If we gonna watch it, we gonna watch the real thing, bruh. We ain't, no. No. What? Mm -mm, we finna watch the real thing. <laughs> had my nigga look like he just seen a ghost. Look at him. Look at my boy. Mm! Straight business. Oh my goodness. <laughs> had my nigga run to the corner. The fact that he's saying that, bro, it's crazy to me. <laughs> どこ見てんだ。ドーバラ。ノメテンジョネドコロガギラ。ハマネコ。ああ、せまネグ。ヘッドイズフォークネグカフナブルドね。ネグは今度ドゥ。あ。オマイガッド。ゲットアウト。マ
We are neither machines nor something else. I forgot that who was clean. I ain't gonna lie. But let me okay. I seen somebody in a, like a comment section say like why she stopped him from like killing Robin, and it made a lot of sense. I'm not gonna lie, because she was like, cause Maru did blame himself for getting Shiro and uh, his girlfriend killed. Um, even though that was her wish, Maru felt like it was his fault to why she died, and you know. He blamed himself and he wanted to kill himself. But Hidaku or Hidaki, <laughs> excuse me, took like responsibility, not responsibility of like the death, but took responsibility with on her shoulders or his shoulders to actually care for Maru and make Maru feel much better. So what basically what what um Maru did for her this episode is what um Kidaku or Kidaki, uh, Hiroki did to his sister, like, did to him. Why, nigga, one? Look at this nigga. He mad at you. Wanna... My nigga, straight business. Inazaki, Robin. その面を learn more about everyone that appears in this season like did you know the author thought of gojo when he decided that he wanted a character to be the perfect ceiling of his power system or that halfway through the series he started to draw gojo as handsome as possible since he wanted the art to live up to the personality and description of the character aside from that we learned that gojo really hates alcohol so he never drinks probably because it would mess up his abilities interestingly what? enough when asked about the other members of the gojo clan and whether or not they're alive akutami says maybe leaving the mystery of Gojo's Ooh. other family members still up in the air <laughs> since they've never appeared in the series. Lastly, we learned that Gojo actually wears glasses for blind people because sometimes if he's not covering his eyes when using his techniques, it starts to overload him a bit, a weakness he's likely overcome after his time in the pr prison round. Bro, this nigga get buff as a bit. Oh my god. Okay, I ain't gonna lie. We had a good stream. I'm gonna end it off right here. I'm gonna lie this. Ever notice how most anime boys look like girls just a bit? <laughs> just like BTS is shaking. <laughs> look, look, look. Look, I do notice it because there's a bunch of traps in Naruto and there's a bunch of traps in, um, bro, there's so many traps in so many animes, bro. I, I, oh my God. It's like a vampire anime. This nigga like a straight girl. He like a girl. He walk out the bathroom. Flat chest, like I, n the nigga that was right there in front of him might have seen his meat. Not gonna lie, like he might have seen his meat, bro. And shit, <laughs> shit, bro. Like, but the nigga, matter of fact, I'm gonna show y'all. Hold on, if I could find it, if I could find the anime. Oh, it's right here. Yeah. What that hoe called again? Take on me. Take on me. me uh. Hey, I love that song. Trap. I'm not, but I'm when I tell you, when I show y'all this, I am not kidding, bro. I hope it's nothing too crazy. <laughs> Nigga also sound like a girl. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Nigga like a girl. Nigga has a whole dick. 
he had that nigga. He had that. He had dick slung in front of this nigga. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, bro. Oh man. Makes it even better, bro. Oh man, go man. Dog, you know the man. I thought it was a girl. I sound like a girl too. Bigger is that? そうだよどうしたのいやちょっとちょっと僕が多くて頭が僕はてっきり七草さんから聞いてるもんだとばっかり大丈夫だよほら僕女の子にしか見えないでしょだからね何の関係がそもそもなんで重装してるの似合うからに決まってるじゃないなんか知らないけどこの状態の方が男女どっちからもモテるんだもん君僕の眷属になりなよ吸血鬼にならない俺はいつ殺されてもおかしくないってことでもだからって初香さんである必要はなんで僕が男だから君は僕が男であることを確認したけど実のところどうでもいいと思ってるんだだって顔は可愛いわけだし<笑>ヤモリ君突然ストレートだよねなんで照れてんの I hope it ain't crazy. I know a nigga with a bob cut. Oh my god, this the I hate that haircut, bro. It nigga look kind of look like uh, what's that nigga name from Despicable Me? Yeah, what's that shit, bro? The villain, this nigga. If you if you come around me looking like this nigga, looking like this, or this, if you come up to me with a bondage mask on, I'm not gonna take you seriously. Especially if you come up looking, <laughs> come up to me looking like you formed from the 1970s. I'm not gonna take you seriously. This is the worst. Bro, that's the worst, bro. <laughs> hey, man. Chucky has one. But Chucky's a different nigga, bro. Chucky's an actual, like, doll. He's a doll that's hunted. It is not just him that has the... It's, it's every Chucky doll that has that kind of cut. But not gonna lie, I need to eat. I haven't really ate all day. I'm finna see y'all tomorrow. Thank y'all for coming through. Appreciate y'all. I love y'all. I, I ain't gonna lie. In my streams abruptly. Etna. Oh, my God. Etna head is crazy. Her head. She got a blow body, and her head is, like, as big as her body. Her head big as shit. But, yeah. I'm gonna see y'all niggas tomorrow. Thank y'all for coming through. Appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Hope y'all have a good day. Be safe. Hope y'all achieve y'all dreams, you know. Stay consistent if y'all want to. You gotta, you gotta stay on your toes though. But I appreciate y'all coming through. Hey, Neon, I'm about to. If you have more art, send it to me for real, for real. But thank y'all for coming through. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Hope y'all have a good day. Hope y'all be safe. Keep y'all minds up. All right, be safe.